Hello everybody, it is your professor Rocco, your boy, coming at you once again with another Age of Sigmar video. In this class, as you can see above me here, we're talking about what do you actually bring to a tournament. And, listen, the current tournament season for the international tournament circuit, the ITC, however they're rebranding themselves, is almost over, right? Uh, the Las Vegas Open in North America is their big capstone event to try to put down and solidify their rankings. That's coming up by the time this video comes out, maybe a week or so, if it hasn't already come out. So, that means we have a whole new season for y'all to get ready for. And there's going to be the new GHB, and there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff. You're going to be very excited. And then, I, I just want to make sure you, my students, are properly prepared to kick some butt and take some names. So without any further ado, let's get on with the list. Uh, one, to always have. we got this in three categories here. One, things you always need to have. Your army. This includes army faction terrain. Um, th th this might seem a little silly that I'm including this, but you really need, before you go travel for a tournament, double check you're bringing the right models, the right endless spells, the right heroes, the right things, because a lot of tournaments will not allow you to just straight up proxy a model. Like, you know, if you, like, take the time to convert models into cool things to represent certain things sure that's fine but a lot of the major tournaments it's you need to bring the right stuff you know what you see is what you get and you know you say you're bringing one list and bring all this other stuff that that's a little bit of a problem number two you need the right carrying case to bring all that stuff too so it's, arguably it's one and one a to do this so you know, know bring a good carrying case you know, if you're driving 20 minutes down the street, that is different than if you're flying in an airplane and you need a carrying case that can be taken on as a carry-on or personal bag. Uh, I know for me, when I was, if I had a local tournament, I'd just throw my army in like a storage tub and be good. Uh, you know, like something cheap from like Walmart where you could like magnetize the bottom and, you know, it's fine. And magnetize the miniatures so they just stay in there. Then it could, you know, survive the car ride as it's bouncing around. Um, you know, I took a Games Workshop Crusader case on a plane. And it's small enough that it fits under a seat, sure. And one of the flight attendants let me do that on the flight up to a tournament. On the way back, one of the other ones is like, no. Slightly too big, it looks like it could be really sturdy, and really it's a plastic case filled with foam and models. But he thought it was metal, so he threw it in the hold. Kind of broke my stuff. So bring an appropriate case, um, you know, to carry your stuff for how far you're going. Uh, three, you need your dice. You know, D6s are very important, but... Also, having some dice to act maybe as, like, wound markers, turn order stuff, it's helpful. So you're not just using the same D6s over and over for everything. You might pick some up, like, oh, I only brought 20 dice. I have 10 wounded models, so I only have 10 dice. That, that's rough. So br bring enough dice for what you need to do for your army. Like, for me, I have a couple sets of color-coded dice. I've got, like, currently I've got my 20-pack of Deepkin dice, and then I have some old, uh, smaller teal dice that I use as wound markers, just to keep things more separate. Uh, man, things that I'm recommending here, if you have, if you get, like, a Chessex dice set that has 36 dice, use that. That's what I used for a very long time, where I bought specialty stuff. It's cheap, it's easy, they're very small, so you can pick them all up at once. Life's good. Uh, you also really need to measuring tape, as silly as that sounds. Again, like, bringing dice to a war game tournament. Yeah, of course you would. Double check your bag. Cause you're also probably going to need to put all this in some kind of a backpack. So throw that on the list, too. But yeah, measuring tape, really helpful. Bring a spare if you can. Um, you don't need to buy the Games Workshop special fancy edition one either. 
going to your local hardware store and, or like a Walmart and picking a, a good measuring tape up for like a couple bucks really isn't out of the realm of possibility here. Uh, then when you're doing all that, because everyone's like, hey, Rocco, I have all my rules on my phone from all the apps and stuff. Why are you saying this next thing? Because I'm saying bring your army book because having rules in print really does help especially if your army has like some weird faqs to print out or it's a brand new book and you're getting used to it so you're like oh the app's one thing this is another having your army book that's still like 99 percent usable is great because you can hand it to your opponent be like hey here's this look up this rule if you have questions there's here's a gaming aid you know have a hard copy in case your phone battery dies even better, print out the FAQs as well from the Games Workshop website, Warhammer Community, as they get updated. And have them with your book. Then no one can really go at you about your rules and stuff. And life's fine. Next, we have... Use the current rule book for the, the rules you're playing in the event. Now, wh what I mean by this is... If you're event you're going to is a classic Warhammer Age of Sigmar tournament. You're playing out of the General's Handbook. It's got all the different scenarios and battle plans you need, all the special rules for that season, all the specifics. And it also comes with a copy of the core rules in it, which is really nice, and usually some other kind of gaming aids. Bring that. It's really helpful. Um, Because, you know, at the end of the day, not every tournament organizer is going to be able to even print out all the different battle plans, and they're going to rely on you, the gamer, to be bringing this so people know what to play. And some battle packs aren't out of the General's Handbook if you're playing in a more narrative-focused event or if someone like created their own scenarios. So bring the appropriate rule set that you're playing usually found in the tournament pack that you usually it's on like the Facebook group or website or someone's got like a Google Doc print that bad boy out read it before you go so you learn like how they're specifically ruling certain things if they have any house rules involved it, it's really helpful it's something I honestly struggle with a lot remembering to do next you're gonna seem silly so for my army I have a, like, I call it a breakfast in bed tray. It's something that I got when um when I got married. And it was like a, like, we got it as a gift. It's like a cutesy thing, but it's, it's like a foldable tray. So that between games, I can just, like, fold this tray up, have all my models in there. I don't have to keep putting them back in my carrying case. And a lot of people have display boards for that reason where it really doubles as a carrying tray so that between games, if you're not always putting your models individually back into the foam and you're like, oh, I gotta lift it out. And then when you move to the table, then you pick them all out one at a time to deploy your stuff. Have a big old tray. Some people even have carts for this that store all their stuff and they just wheel the little cart around. I love it. Um, They're helpful, but a tray to carry your army so you don't have to keep putting it in and out of your carrying case is great. Because uh, not all armies can be four Achillean Leviathans, you know, the big turtles, and a hero. Fortunately, some of them are hordes. And there's hundreds of models. And it's a pain in the butt. So having something like this just really speeds up your game. Because you really don't want to waste time in between rounds of a tournament like, the round started, and you're still getting your stuff out so you can even try to get organized to deploy your army. Yeah, just nice, nice thing to have with you. Um, and finally, in this category, and again, this may sound strange, but this is true in the United States. For the most part, like, 99% of all tournaments I've been to, I've only known uh, two that provide these, bring your own objective markers. Yeah, I know, that seems like a weird statement to say. But honestly, bring your own objective markers. Most tournaments 
don't have the budget to provide a bunch that people would end up taking anyway. I think it's a cool thing to do for, like, swag and stuff. Like, yeah, you know, you get a set of objective markers as part of showing up. Have these cool little 3D printed whatever. It has our logo for our local gaming club or whatever you're doing. That's cool. Most people don't do that. They rely on you to bring the objective markers around. You know, they will hand out, like, little bits of swag or, like, here's a dice holder, here's a 3-inch gauge. Don't plan on that being there, though. Bring your own stuff, just in case. In fact, this goes into um, personal preferences with gaming aids, right? You know, it could be three-inch gauges to be like, oh, I need to stay outside of combat range. So I have this nice little three-inch long marker I can put down and be like, cool. I'm outside. I can physically show my opponent I'm outside of three inches because nothing touches the gauge. A lot of them also have uh, sides like a two inch for reach or a one inch to see if you're in coherency. They're really useful. I also have a nine inch gauge because, um, you know, you got to check to make sure that when you're deep striking, you're nine inches away from enemy units unless you have some kind of special rule. So having one of those is really helpful. It also doubles as a six inch rule in case you need to deep strike from a table edge. The things that I like to carry on me in my backpack. Uh, we have tokens. Tokens, just to show, like, which one of your units is buffed with stuff. Some people have little, uh, it's like, the, what is the game, like, Othello or something like that, where it's like a white disc, like little white discs, maybe the size of, like, a half dollar or an American quarter, where then you could write on it in, like, a, a white, uh, a wet erase marker. Um, and even if not, like, I, I have stuff that, again, I got off of some third-party, probably Etsy, where it's like, you know, Mystic Shield, Arcane Bolt, plus one attack. But, like, whatever buffs your army can cast or debuffs to put on an opponent, if you could bring tokens for that, it really helps out so that everyone is operating with full knowledge of how the game's working. You know, it, it's one of those things where it just makes the game flow faster if everyone knows what's going on at all times. And you don't forget your rules. That's really helpful. And again, keeping everyone honest is always nice. Um, and again, also in, in, in that same note, of gaming aids with that, we also need ways to track the score. Like, sometimes I like using, like, a D20... Like, um, for Magic the Gathering, they made special dice where, like, they count down or up. It's easy to count. Or D20s and D10s or D12s that are... Every time I'm saying D, I'm saying, like, a dice of so many sides. It's like, a 12-sided dice is a D12. Uh, but there are different dice companies that make dice specifically for counting and tracking large numbers of stuff. Some people like to go paper and pen or pencil as well, and just write down, hey, what battle tactic did you do this turn? Did you score it? What's your grand strategy? What are we doing? Some people have um, gaming aids where they are, again, like whiteboards that are made with magnets, so you can stack different things on and be like, hey, cool, you chose, here's my like, here's my whiteboard, and we've got a little magnet for all the battle tactics. Do this in camera, right? And then you go, boom, you did that battle tactic. You're there. You know, it depends on how much money you want to put into this, or if you want to choose a piece of paper and a pencil. Um, and important things to track are, like, wounds on models, what round you're in, because sometimes a turn just takes so long, you're like, oh, are we on turn four? No, that was your opening turn, dude. You're slow playing me. These are ways to, again, keep people accountable. And also, for, like, me, sometimes I get so caught in the tactics of what I'm doing, I'll forget what battle tactic I picked at the beginning of my hero phase, because my mind, I'm like, oh, cool, I see this opening, I'm going to do this. Hey, wait a minute, that doesn't score me my battle tactic. It's part of the reason why I've gone so hard in covering battle tactics for different videos and stuff, and, like, giving the order of, like, how to do easier ones, how to do harder ones. It just helps. It helps me with my own muscle memory, so when I walk up to a tournament, I go, oh, yeah, my game plan is this because of that. And if I have the gaming aid and the tracker to help me remember, it's a bit easier.
up. Let's see here. We have two more categories. Tournament specific stuff. All right, this is some really hardcore stuff you need. Generally, paper copies of your list, typed out, printed out from like War Scroll Builder usually, or whatever in vogue app, whether it's Battlescribe or Age of Sigmar app. I hate Battlescribe for Age of Sigmar. The output of it is just so horrible compared to other things. Okay for 40k, because that's all they've ever really known. Um, and not as useful for us. But what I'm looking for here is a copy for yourself, to keep yourself accountable. A copy for whoever the tournament organizer is, in case they need it for their own record keeping. And want a paper copy in addition to whatever app they're using to track all this stuff. Uh, you need... Also, copies for your opponents, because before the game starts, you should go over each other's lists and then give them a copy to keep so they can reference it throughout the game so they know what your stuff does. And that, it's part of a, also part of a good sportsmanship kind of thing. Um, print out the rules packet before you go to the, the event if it's available. Because again, like, I, I went to a tournament in Maryland where the gentleman running it made up his own his own battle plans and his own scoring system didn't know that day of so i had to scramble to make sure i actually understood it all and i missed bonus points that i actually scored and i just didn't know even how to report them or know that i scored them because it was some weird factor throughout the game and I'm like oh dang i was in one of my reviews actually on here Running out the tournament packet and reading it is really helpful. I'm getting better at it. You can too. Uh, finally, this is this is not necessarily common. It's more common in Australia, actually, in places with smaller gaming clubs, where Warhammer in general hasn't really kicked off. Sometimes it's just nice to bring terrain to an event. Like hills, a little fort, like setting up a little town. It is very expensive to collect proper wargaming terrain, let alone the time it takes to make stuff from scratch from foam or paint it. Or, you know, there's plenty of YouTube tutorials on how to do it. A lot of people, like, I don't have the space where I live. I, I live in an apartment complex, I live in a city. You know, I have to have brush on primer because I can't set up a spray booth for an airbrush. I can't go outside with a can of spray paint primer because people think I'm tagging the building. I can't really go and build and store a bunch of terrain if I wanted to host an event here in one of the big ass common rooms. You know, some of these gaming clubs only have three, four, five people, and what? You're going to have one person hold all the terrain? Some of that's not fair. You know, we're not all Adepticon, the Las Vegas Open, Holy Wars, take your pick of an event. It's a lot to put on. And if one way you can help build your community up by, you know, storing a few pieces of terrain at your home and bringing it to support your local gaming club when they have an event, this is a really cool thing to do. I like it. I think it should be a bit more common. It's fun. If you can afford it, it's great. And, again, it it can also build a real sense of community for these smaller gaming clubs, too. Because, uh, as y'all might remember and know, you know, for a long time, I, I have been a member of the Basement War Gamers. I'm not really that active now since I've moved. And I've kind of fell in with some locals where, you know, they were more casual. And, you know, I taught them more Age of Sigmar, and then, then they taught me 40k and Necromunda, and now we're getting to a point where we've got enough people we can be a gaming club like this and go to different people's houses and host small events, at least among ourselves, if not to maybe a wider community, and terrain's a necessity, tables are a necessity, battle mats to, to set up a table are a necessity. This is how you can build these larger, self-sustaining pieces and build something that outlives you is something as cool as just hey yeah bring some terrain to a to an event 
help them out. Help the tournament organizers out. And finally, and probably the most important thing, I'm whacking my notes on this sticky note all over the place, playing with my hands. The most important thing, messed up my green screen, I think, a bit. Keeping this all in. The most important thing, if you've heard me for any of this, bring snacks, water. A tournament day probably starts around, I don't know, 8 in the morning for the event. Sometimes 9 for registration. And some events have been providing breakfast and then saying, hey, go, you know, fend for yourself for lunch. Some provide lunch and not breakfast. Some might do breakfast, lunch, and dinner, depending on how much you paid for the event. All these things are amazing, and even if they don't provide food, it's really cool that a bunch of people got together to come and play Warhammer for the day. But that's a long day if the rounds are two and a half to three hours long, and you'd have like some downtime. Like Usually it's like a half hour in between. And then you got to stay for the event, you know, like all the prizes and stuff, and then, you know, you should help break down the event and help the tournament organizers and, you know, be nice. Because we're all stewards of our own communities here. You know, that's a cool way to just give back to a community that you spent the day hanging out with. That's a long day. That is a lot of stuff. You know, bring water, bring something to drink, bring... Bring some snacks, bring a granola bar, a power bar, something. And you know what? If they do provide stuff, great. You just leave it in your bag and you just go on about your day. And if not, when it's, you know, the final round of the day and it's coming down to like a split decision, you know, you had your energy drink, your water bottle, and your granola bar. You're not thinking about food and you're not thirsty while your opponent over there has got like cotton mouth going... Can't wait to get pizza when I get home, man. You know, and they're just not thinking about the game. Snacks. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, what else would you bring to a tournament that you that you think I didn't cover or bring? You know, something silly, you know, or something really important that you're like, Rocco, why didn't you do this? Tell me in the comments. You know, and if you have any ideas for other stuff you want covered, you know, put them down in the comments, leave a like, subscribe, and as I like to say at the end of all of our videos, you know, thank you for coming to class today, uh, class dismissed, bye, also I'm wearing this robe because I'm wearing my favorite Hulk shirt, and then I realized, oh wait, I'm keeping this in too, I realized, oh wait, it's a green screen,